Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don and Dave and Michaela coming back to you uh, for another virtual Q&A session. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about an oldie but a goodie, uh, Series 6 coaxial cable. And uh, you would think with something that's been around uh, for so long that every possible question and answer in the world has been figured out for it. But uh, as it turns out, there's quite a few things that still come up about this stuff. And there's new people uh, that, that come into the industry over time. So we're going to go ahead and Michaela's going to ask some questions and Dave and I are going to do our best to answer them. We're going to start it off with Dave. And the first question is, what is the meaning of Series 6? Series 6 is a new name for an old friend for most of us, RG6. There's a new nomenclature standard or a new designation for coaxial cable that uh, drops the RG designation, which is now deprecated. And what used to be called RG6 is now called Series 6. Uh, what used to be called RG11 is now Series 11. And same for RG59. It's now called Series 59. That's the new uh, naming designation. And that's the only difference between Series 6 and RG6 cable is the new name. The next question is for Dawn, and it is, can I use outdoor rated coaxial cable indoors and vice versa? Well, it's basically it depends and no. Uh, so really the, the discussion doesn't revolve around coaxial cable so much as it involves uh, outside plant or OS, OSP cable um, and how far you can bring that indoors uh, on particular types of installations. Uh, it, so basically the longer answer is, uh, CMX rated or outside plant cable uh, may enter into a commercial structure up to 50 feet, if not in conduit, after which it must transition to indoor cable. Or, and there's an exception in a code for this, um, you, can, can, you can actually bring it in more than 50 feet, but it has to be in either medium or heavy duty threaded, uh, in other words, intermediate conduit or the really heavy uh, uh, RMC conduit, where you screw it together, uh, the cable can run, and as long as it's uh, sealed, the cable continue, may continue to run inside a, of a commercial structure, but it has to be continuous and, and sealed all the way to the point of termination. Uh, but normally, if you're not using that type of conduit to seal up the cable run, uh, then 50 feet is your maximum. Now, there's an exception made in the code uh, for residential structures. Uh, so outdoor cable, uh, that's one quarter inch or less in overall diameter thickness, uh, may be used in uh, single or duplex dwellings uh, throughout your entire structure, whether it's indoor or outdoor style. I mean, obviously, uh, if you have indoor co uh, coaxial cable or any kind of indoor cable, you should never take that outside because it's not UV stable and it's gonna break down outdoors. But if you're gonna be using uh, residentially single or duplex dwelling, coaxial cable of a quarter inch thickness or less, uh, you can use it all throughout the structure and outside, no restrictions. In most, in most jurisdictions, of course, you should check your local codes to be sure, but more often than not, what I just said is, is gonna apply for the entire United States. It just so happens that our dual shield uh, outdoor coaxial uh, RG6 cable, our Series 6 cable, is actually of the proper diameter where in a residential setting, single or duplex uh, uh, type dwelling, you can go ahead and just use it wherever you want. So hopefully that, that kind of explains it a little bit. Awesome, thank you, Don. Um, Dave, we're gonna go back to you. Um, and the next question is, how is series six coaxial cable terminated? Okay, there are three different types of connectors that are normally associated with uh, series six cable. F connectors, are the threaded type that uh, you know, usually find on the back of a television set or back of a cable modem. BNC connectors are a twist lock type of connector that uh, is uh, often found used in component video. And RCA connectors, which are a push-pull type connector normally uh, most used in audio connections. Compression style and crimp on style are acceptable, although compression style connections are much preferred. Twist-on type of connectors are uh, no longer acceptable. 
As far as the uh, actual nuts and bolts of how to do the termination, we have uh, multiple blogs on our website that uh, address how to do this with pictures and even videos. How long of a distance can Series 6 coaxial cable be used? And will Series 11 go farther? Series 11 will go farther. Really, it depends on the application. Of course, the most common application these days is broadband. Uh, that would be for cable TV, satellite TV. And uh, whether it's Series 6 or Series 11 is going to define how far you can take it because Series uh, 11 is a much heavier duty cable. But just to, to gloss over the distance limits, so basically from powered device, from powered device, the entire channel, uh, Series 6 can reach 184 feet. Uh, that's inclusive of a, uh, it's all RG6 or Series 6 cable. Uh, you got two patch cords at the outlets on both ends that are capable of being uh, 17 feet long. And then you have a middle link that is 150 feet long. So basically, outlet to outlets 150, and then you add on the, 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 the equipment cords at both ends of the, of the link, and you're at 184 feet permissible. And that's the same for, cattle, uh, for either cable TV or satellite. Uh, when it comes to Series 11, now your distances can jump to 328 feet from power device to power device. Uh, so essentially, that's a 295-foot uh, link uh, that from outlet to outlet that's constructed entirely of Series 11 coaxial cable. And then the remaining uh, 32 feet of permitted cable it would actually be Series 6 for use inside the room, and that would uh, be used at uh, both ends of the, of the, uh, the link uh, for equipment cords. So outlet to outlet uh, with the Series 11 is 295, and then you've got another 32 feet or essentially 16 feet at each side uh, of Series 6 that can be used for in-the-room equipment uh, patching connections, things like that. So uh, really, it, it, uh, Series 6, it serves most indoor purposes well. Uh, however, when you're doing long haul outdoor runs, uh, oftentimes you'll see Series 11 used. How is Series 6 coaxial cable different from Series 11 coaxial cable? Well, it's really just a difference in size and current carrying capability. The, the three what used to be RG designated cables, uh, well, there are more than three, but the 375 ohm ones uh, are now called Series 59, Series 6, and Series 11, only differ uh, in size and current uh, handling capability um, with a few other uh, differences in there. Essentially, I think of RG 59 as uh, wimpy. I think of RG11 as being really strong, and RG6 is just right. Another big difference between like Series 6 and Series 11 is that uh, Series 11 is literally about half an inch thick. It's, it's, it's brutish, heavy, difficult to work with. Uh, if you had to compare it to something else that you might find in your, you know, outside in your yard, a uh, frozen garden hose in the middle of winter would probably be the uh, the right term to apply to Series 11. So uh, Series 11 is very heavy, expensive, difficult to work with, but it gets you a longer distance. So that's another really big difference between those two. Isn't coaxial cable becoming obsolete? For many years in the industry, uh -huh, there have been a lot of pundits and uh, technicians that have been predicting the the ultimate the ultimate doom and death of coaxial cable but thus far it's proven really difficult to kill it off um and for good reason uh new construction out there uh new businesses well businesses are beginning wired with fiber optic for a while for internet connections but but new construction uh residential is often fiber optic now but you have to take into account that there is a whole lot of older homes out there that have been erected and have coaxial cable running to them that are always going to be there. And uh, there's a huge amount of coaxial still installed. And if it's installed and working, it has to be maintained. So it's always going to be for sale, at least for the next probably at least 50 years. And also there's a new development, uh, which is 10 gigabit 
internet speed uh, on download, of course, uh, over coaxial cable. So that's going to extend its life yet further. Uh, so now uh, you're going to be able to pick, get uh, coaxial cable connections that at least on the download speed is going to match uh, some of the fastest fiber that's out there. So the answer is, is no, it's really not becoming obsolete. Um, not really. Uh, not if you count usage. Dave, I'm going to head back over to you. And the next question is, is quad shield or dual shield coaxial cable better? Well, it d depends on what you want to use it for. Quad shield uh, coaxial cable has more shielding. Uh, and so it's better for uh, shielding against uh, electromagnetic interference. Same thing you use shielding for in a shielded Ethernet cable, shielding out that interference or blocking it off. So if you are installing your coax cable in an environment where there's lots of electromagnetic interference, you will want to opt for quad shield cable, just like you would opt for shielded cable if you were using ethernet cable. So yeah, it just, it depends on your application. Great, um, Don, why can coaxial cable not be used for high-speed ethernet connections, like with copper twisted pair category cable? You could, uh, technically speaking, you could use coaxial cable to achieve high-speed ethernet connections. However, um, not in a cost-effective manner. You see, coaxial cable has only one singular conductor circuit, or Ethernet cable has four. And I don't mean individual wires, I mean conductor circuits. So it's easier to achieve higher bandwidths more, with more conductor circuits, and uh, also with electromagnetic balancing. Uh, it, it makes for a less heavy, cable to achieve the same rate of speed. Uh, I would hate to think what a, a, the required coaxial cable would be uh, in order to achieve like 10 gigabit networking. So it's also a matter of cost effectiveness. If you try to achieve modern networking speeds with coaxial, you would also require much more expensive equipment. Because right now you can pick up like an, you know, an ethernet NIC uh, if you needed to add one to your computer, it's like, what, $15? The equivalent device to support coaxial would cost considerably more. And so it's a matter of, of heat, cost, cable thickness. So all of those things combined basically put coaxial cable for in, inside networking sort of in, in, into the uh, outfield. In other words, it, it sort of put it into the background and then it just sort of disappeared. And now we use twisted pair uh, category cable for modern networks. Great, and our last question um, is for you, Dave. It's kind of a three-part series, um, but the first question is, what is CCS and is it inferior to solid copper? And then where is CCS appropriate and where must solid copper be used? And then are there installations different? Well, yes, yeah, CCS stands for uh, copper clad steel, which means that the uh, center conductor in this type of coaxial cable is uh, essentially made of steel with uh, a copper surface bonded to it. Uh, and the copper surface is where the actual signaling takes place, called the, the skimming effect. Why use copper clad steel? Um, well, in, when installing it, uh, you can pull it harder because it's essentially stronger. But also when installing it, you have to have special tools for doing something as simple as cutting it. Normal uh, copper cable cutters will uh, quickly be destroyed when used on steel wire. When it comes to performance, um, CCS and solid copper are actually similar in performance. Uh, Performance-wise, there isn't a reason to choose one over the other, but uh, as we talked about, there are some installation differences. And uh, myself, as a chemist, I know that talking about steel, if there's just a little bit of water and a little bit of oxygen present, you know, like air, it's going to corrode and it's going to corrode really fast. I uh, would choose not to use copper coated steel just for that reason. Where solid copper really shines over copper clad steel is the ability to handle PoE and uh, DC voltage. The problem with copper clad steel is that electricity to like power up like a dish, for example, is going to peter out or attenuate uh, really quickly and underpower or undervolt your end equipment. That could cause it to be damaged. Uh, I mean, it's very at the very least, it's probably going to cause it to be unreliable, not work at all, 
or literally be damaged for, uh, because it's been undervolted. Solid copper doesn't have that problem. It handles uh, data transmission just as well, but it also hands that DC voltage. Uh, it's, it's so critical, for example, for satellite uh, installations. So technically speaking, you shouldn't be using anything other than solid copper coaxial in a satellite installation. Other than a few dollars in savings, there's not any real advantage to copper clad steel. Hopefully we answered some questions. Uh, we did our best to address maybe some more off the wall questions that we get in the Q&A sessions that we didn't necessarily write about in our blogs. Uh, but we do have quite a few blogs though in our Cable Academy that you can go and look at that have videos about terminating and, and working with uh, you know coaxial cables. So I recommend you head over to our Cable Academy and give those blogs a checkout and uh, they provide some pretty in-depth information. With that, we're going to say happy networking.